Someone has broken into the National Bank, the Federal Reserve, a 21st century thief breaking into files, not into metal safes. The mysterious group Anonymous has struck again with a warning. This is just the beginning. ABC's senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas tells us who these people are. secretive organization known as Anonymous, a loose-knit group of computer hackers who came to the defense of WikiLeaks and got the attention of law enforcement in the process. They are young and stealthy and they are potential giant killers. Anonymous hacktivists, hacker activists, have basically got together and are exacting revenge for what they see as attacks on WikiLeaks and they're targeting a number of corporations that have cut off uh, um, their ties with WikiLeaks. So they see themselves as protesters. Um, essentially that the, the government can't prevent you or I from, from talking openly. Um, they interpret it much more broadly. They believe that everybody has an inalienable right to say whatever they want on any forum whatsoever. And out today, this group of computer hackers are apparently threatening cyber war over this WikiLeaks case. What do you know about that? The NBC is reporting that uh, Anonymous, it's a group we've heard of before, is threatening new attacks, not only on uh, U.S. Uh, corporations, but also on some of the government officials. Number one story, MasterCard announced Monday it would no longer process payments to WikiLeaks. This morning, Internet activists crashed its website. This afternoon, Visa.com crashed. Tonight, Twitter might be next. It suspended an Operation Payback account, a group calling itself Ana Anonymous has been waging Operation Payback for a few months now. The group says it is dedicated to a, quote, anonymous, decentralized movement that fights against censorship and copy wrong. Well, officials have confirmed that at least 41 Malaysian government websites had been hacked overnight. This follows a threat by hacker group Anonymous to punish the authorities for internet censorship. Officials say that 51 websites were hit and at least 41 of them were disrupted in these attacks. Targets like HP Gary, a major cybersecurity firm some U.S. government agencies rely on to keep their computers safe. Last month, HP Gary boasted it would expose Anonymous. The response was swift. Anonymous took down their website, stole thousands of emails, and posted them on the internet. The CEO resigned. Anonymous is credited with bringing down government websites in Tunisia, Egypt, and Libya. And now it's made new threats against companies and government officials complicit in what it views as the mistreatment of Bradley Manning, the army private accused of leaking to WikiLeaks. Anonymous is powerful enough that it's certainly struck fear into the hearts of some of the biggest technology companies, the biggest companies in the whole world. Our own Justice Department doesn't take any action against these guys. It's been three years since uh, the debacle in the Wall Street that caused our economic collapse. And where's, where's Washington? Where's Washington? They haven't done a damn thing. But look, what you're looking at here, in combination of all these things, is a new model on how to fight back. You have to take action into your hands, direct peaceful resistance. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources 
into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs, you could be in a lot of trouble. Now, people have figured out that you can hit the powerful where it counts in their pocketbooks. The same thing happened in Egypt, where Mubarak only sat down after the labor strikes began. And then there's the national and international movement against the power establishment. The group Anonymous recently released this video, warning the global banking systems. We are a decentralized, nonviolent resistance movement which seeks to restore the rule of law and fight back against the organized criminal class. And that's a little spooky, I liked it. And apparently they came armed with documents, which we're going to tell you about in a second. But look, what I like is peaceful resistance. However, they just can't, they can't just randomly launch an attack. And in order to do it, you have to go on this IRC chat that anyone can suggest a target. And that person then has to make a compelling case for the target, and then whoever happens to be, it's a quorum of whoever happens to be awake, um, can vote up or down on this target. Um, so if somebody has not made a compelling enough case, enough people may uh, pull their computers off of this voluntary botnet that the attack might not be nearly as effective. So it is, in fact, an amazing kind of Athenian dem democracy. If you forget sort of the ethics of what they're doing, um, place that to one side. What they've achieved is sort of this set of checks and balances that agrees in a very fluid way on what the target is. This is the new model of fighting back against the establishment and against corporate power. Don't wait for your knight in shining armor to show up from DC. The bad news is he ain't coming. The good news is it turns out you're the knight in shining armor. I believe that Gandhi's views were the most enlightened of all the political men in our time. We should strive to do things in his spirit, not to use violence in fighting for our cause, but by non-participation in anything you believe is evil. next is all they can do is shut down the internet itself and we see how that went for them in Egypt and we the people know that when the government shuts down the internet that's when it's time to shut down the government we are anonymous we are legion we do not forgive we do not forget expect us and now, you can expect.